English, Espanol. Now I want to talk about these two topics. Um, let's talk FE and intellectual property law. Ahora quiero hablar sobre estos dos temas. Um, let's talk FE y uh, la ley de la propiedad intelectual. I hope you have seen uh, most of my videos, especially, hola, ¿qué tal? Uh, especially the video number 64. Espero que has visto la mayoría de mis videos, especialmente el video número 64. Video mix, Mark K. Sargent. And if you have seen more of my videos, you know that I'm very passionate about this annoying topic of intellectual property. Y si has visto más videos de, en mi canal de YouTube, Manos Enigma, sabrás que soy muy apasionada sobre el tema de la propiedad intelectual. My favorite message is Innovation and freedom of expression is inhibited by the perverse law of intellectual property. Mi mensaje favorito es Innovación y libertad de expresión está inhibida por la ley perversa de la propiedad intelectual. You know, actually I Before my videos, I often put the message uh, this video is only possible thanks to Creative Commons. Antes de mis videos, pongo a menudo también el mensaje. Este video es solo posible uh, gracias a Creative Commons. It's a little different from other, many other people who put in front of their videos in the beginning the message. Uh, copyright, um, fair use, uh, like uh, excusing themselves that they use some pictures or something to create their videos. O de otra manera, otra gente antes en el principio de su video ponen el mensaje de sí que hay una ley que permite un poco de usar un poco de algo. Eh, ah. Derechos de autores, no es derecho, es prohibición. Derecho es para una persona, prohibición para, para casi, casi todo el mundo. It shouldn't be called a copyright, it should be called a copy prohibition, because the right is just for one person and uh, the prohibition for all of the rest of the people. Actually, we should prohibit the, the tire of the cars, because it's a copy of the original car of the original wheel. En realidad deberíamos prohibir las ruedas porque son una copia de la rueda original. When we talk about ethics, the question of is it right or wrong, um, many people think of the laws of the states. Cuando queremos hablar sobre el tema de ética, si algo está bien o mal, mucha gente piensa en las leyes de los estados. And many laws are just designed to benefit the big companies. Democracy, corporatocracy. Y muchas leyes están diseñadas para beneficiar las grandes empresas. Hay un remo en inglés, democracy, corporatocracy. And Hollywood is of course the number one who benefits from that law of intellectual property copyright. Hollywood es eh, prácticamente el número uno que beneficia de la ley de la propiedad intelectual y derechos de autores. And now what I'm going to explain is a little bit more complicated. Ahora lo que voy a explicar es un poco más, más complicado. If you create a documentary or report for the news, um, 
if the message not is not the truth it should be called mockumentary and not documentary si pro produces un uh, documental o un reportaje para las noticias y sí que es y si es, no es la verdad eso debería llamarse mockumentary y no documentary um, bueno en español no, no existe me parece la, la palabra pero eh, me refiero a ese tema de la luna ¿eh? I'm referring to the moon and NASA flat earth me refiero a sí todo el, el programa de el, eh, el teatro en el espacio NASA Tierra plana. Let's talk FAA. So let's talk about ethics. What is worse? Vamos a hablar sobre ética. ¿Qué es peor? To break an unjust law. And anyway, it's very difficult to, to, to define which is fair use copyright. It's peor. De romper una ley injusta, de todas formas el, el tema de la ley de la, intelectual, de la propiedad intelectual es muy difícil de definir qué es uso eh, legit, legito, o como se dice, fair use en, en español, en comparación de una mentira tan, quiero decir, una mentira tan grande de los últimos 500 años in comparison to this big, big lie, the big deception, the biggest lie of these last 500 years. And some time ago I made a video. Some time ago I made several videos about that topic, different Bible versions and copyright. Hace algún tiempo hice algunos vídeos sobre el tema diferentes versiones de la Biblia y derechos de autores. I came to the conclusion that this perverse law of intellectual property gives incentive to counterfeit uh, the Bible versions but because it must be at least 10% different. Yo he eh, llegado a la conclusión que esa ley perversa de la propiedad intelectual da incentivo para falsificar las versiones de la Biblia porque tiene que ser por lo menos 10% diferente para poder registrarlo. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Um, uh, to be able to register, it must be at least 10% different from the original version. So sometimes the translations are a little bit better to understand, but in just uh, in uh, several cases, it's not just better. It's they took just a word, uh, a really bad word, because just it's, it must be different, and it's not easier to understand. Sí, en algunos casos sí se puede entender mejor, pero otros otros casos eh, simplemente. Eh, cogieron una palabra que tiene que ser diferente que no era para entenderlo mejor solo porque tenía que ser diferente para poder registrarlo so now uh, I'll paste this, uh, these videos ahora a continuación voy a pegar estos videos just one more thing I wanted to say uh, solo una cosita más quería decir. For example, in my last video, Mark K. Sargent says, I, uh, I'm not sure, I, I just, uh, because I'm afraid, I don't monetize uh, my videos. Um, uh, in my último video, Mark K. Sargent dice uh, que por miedo, por el tema de copyright, 
edisaga io no no lo pongo a monet monetize monet para poner anuncios en youtube pero for example maybe the the video might be 100 minutes long and you just put one minute of uh, something which is copyrighted of another person so uh, they um, force you to monetize but not in your name but uh, you can't choose the option without uh, advertisement they they force you to put their advertisement and they get the money for the nine, 99 minutes of your video you don't get it's just what that minute so they they get the money so that you are forced to put this ad advertisement bueno suponemos que haces un, un video de 100, 100 minutos 99 minutos lo produces yo Tú, y, y solo por ejemplo tal vez un minuto es, es de derechos de autores y aunque tú quisieras ponerlo sin anuncios ellos te obligan de poner anuncios y que tú no vas a recibir ese dinero sino ellos ellos que tienen ya tienen demasiado esto ya que ya he dicho antes mira las leyes están diseñadas para beneficiar las grandes empresas es corporatocracy as i said before this, the laws are designed to to benefit the big uh, companies it's it's corporatocracy it's not democracy corporatocracy sorry for getting a little nervous but i'm very very passionate about this annoying topic of intellectual property Perdonad de perder un poco los nervios, pero estoy muy apasionada sobre ese tema perverso de la propiedad intelectual. So now finally I'll paste these uh, videos about um, the Bible versions. Actually, this is uh, <laughs> actually the best example how perverse that law is. Bueno, ahora por fin voy a pegar estos vídeos de este tema de las versiones de, de la Biblia. Al final, este es eh, casi el mejor tema para demostrar la perversidad de ese, esa ley. Do you think that we need 500 different English Bibles? No, in fact, I, I mentioned uh, we have a glut. We don't have any need for any, any more. I don't think there's a good reason for why we've had the explosion of them over the past number of decades. I know what the reason is. Right. It's real simple. It's, it's, it's the fact that if you have a publishing house, you want to do a study Bible or something, which I am not a study Bible fan. Me neither. What they did is if you were a major publishing house, you didn't want to have to pay royalties to somebody else. So they all made their own translations. Right. There is a financial motivation to come out with all these different versions. There is. No mm -hmm. question about it. Right. No question about it. Um, does God expect the average Christian? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Even the corruption of the word of God was going on in Paul's day. So the NIV says, unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. Oh, yeah, they do. In fact, that's why they print all these new Bibles all the time. You know why? So they can copyright them. So that if you quote from them, you have to pay them a dime. It's all, see, the Bible says the love of, money, love of money is the root of all evil. Notice, and we're supposed to somewhere hear God's voice in here. That same reading is also found in the New King James Version of the Bible. Mark chapter 10. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that do what? Trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. And yet the NIV says how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. I'm telling you it's not hard. Unless you're full of pride. Amen. It's not hard. You know what you do? You call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. And the same 
thing keeps coming out. The King James has the smallest number of syllables per word, letters per word, words per sentence. And the King James also has something called cognitive scaffolding. One of the textbooks I wrote when I was a professor at the university was called uh, Design, Process, and Cognitive Behavior. In that book, I talk about how people think and how they learn. But one of the ways children learn is called cognitive scaffolding. That means if I say, the Bible, King James Bible says, uh, be careful for nothing. Okay? Care is a small word that has a definition. You care about something. Full, you have a full glass of milk. So a child will put those two words and they will build them together to understand what careful means. Full of care. Okay? Now, if you look at the New International Version there, it will say anxious. There is no cognitive scaffolding with the word anxious because it doesn't break down because they don't use Anglo-Saxon words. So I try to find out why none of these versions use the simple Anglo-Saxon words. And I found out that it has to do with the derivative copyright law. Okay? The derivative copyright law says, quote, to be copyrightable, um, a derivative work must be different enough from the original to be regarded as a new work and must contain a substantial amount of new material. Making minor changes or additions of little substance to a pre-existing work will not qualify the work as a new version. You have to make substantial changes in the version. So here we have the new King James. It's going to pretend that it's going to update all the King James words. For the word evil, okay, now the word evil will cognitive scaffold for a child to devil. Okay? But they have adversity, distressing, catastrophe, calamity, difficult, harmful, terrible, and doom. I didn't put doom on there. Fat is verdant. Okay? Man is mortal. Old is elderly. Give is gratify. House is habitation. Smell becomes savor. Okay? Why did they do this? Now, there's a book called The NIV Story by Burton Gooder, and he explains why they did it. Because they can't use the King James words. They're the best words, they've already been taken, so they have to go to thesaurus. Now, if you're doing the New American Standard, you get the first choice, but then by the time you're on to the NIV, you're on the third choice, and by the time you're down to the New King James, you can't take anybody else's words, and you're using these ridiculous words like verdant for fat, okay? <laughs> but I think um, what, when people say the King James is hard to understand, they're really misrepresenting how someone understands the Bible. Uh, Psalm 25 says, the meek I'm going to do a review here of the Quick Scan King James Bible. This thing is put out by the Berean Bible Publishers. And uh, it's an interesting new twist on Bible perversion. I'm going to show you here what I mean. Here we have the Holy Bible, Complete Authorized King James Version in Quick Scan, Berean Bible Publishers. There's the address, the website. Here's what the outside of it looks like. You can see that. Let me show you some of the stuff in here. <clears throat> Copyright. The reprinting of any parts of the main content and the additions to this Bible without the author's permission is forbidden. Notice it says additions to this Bible. Okay, not E, you know, additions, A. Ah. Additions. They are adding things, in other words. You're going to see what things are added here in a minute. But very interesting because here I have my Cambridge, my good old Cambridge Bible. Okay. Rights in the authorized King James Version of the Bible are vested in the crown. Does it say anything about uh, you can't copy it, you can't, you know, no part of it can be copied or anything? Uh, no, doesn't say anything about that. The only thing that's quote-unquote copyrighted about this Bible here is the fact that it's a Cambridge. All right, you can't print your own King James Bible and put Cambridge on it. That's what's going on there. But this one, because they changed the text, now they can say this thing is copyrighted. Interesting. But let me show you here what they do with what the quick scan scam is. How quick scan benefits you. Quick scan words. By reading the bold words only, you will reduce reading time by up to two thirds, it says. You simply eliminate the necessity of reading about half the words. Now look at this. 
words that can be left out without changing the overall meaning of the text. Words that can be left out without changing the overall meaning of the text. Remember that as I show you in the actual text how they pervert the scripture. But it says here, a consumer of large chunks, you know, but you eliminate uh, left to right, big head or big problem, as many have in reading, and also a consumer of large chunks of your valuable time. So reading the Bible is not part of valuable time. That's a problem. Quick scan also increases the understanding of most readers. Three designations for the devil. One is Lucifer in Isaiah 14, and the other is Satan. When the Lord says, get thee behind me, Satan addressed him personally. And the third one is a, is a generic term, simply means, or simply says, devil. All right, devil is translated from the Greek diablos, which means a slanderer or an accuser. Satan is a transliteration. It's not a translation. It's simply taken from the text and taken over into English. It is a Hebrew word because Satan shows up in the, in the Old Testament time and time again. And sometimes it is translated and sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's translated and says adversary or what have you like that. But then sometimes not. So it is the name of the devil, Satan. But then there is another name that shows up in the Bible and that name is Lucifer in Isaiah chapter number 14. The name, the word Lucifer is a Latin word, and that word means a shining one or a bright one, or literally Lucifer means a bearer of light. Now, in the book of Isaiah chapter number 14 and verse number 12, the Hebrew word Hillel shows up one time in the Old Testament, one time right there, Isaiah chapter 14. That in itself is remarkable because it shows that the Holy Spirit is giving you that word and associating that word with this fallen creature, Lucifer. And in Isaiah 14, it's talking about his fall from heaven. And uh, the big, doc, the big, uh, the big uh, argument today in the uh, occult world and now coming into the Christian world, and I use the word Christian very lightly, is that Lucifer is not that bad angel that he's been portrayed to be, but rather he's a good angel. And the occult world has always held to this, but now it's coming over into the Christian world. And now this is only getting the foot in the door. The idea is to get you to accept something or premise. Once you accept that, they build upon it. And that's where the problem comes in. Last week we brought up the NIV and some of the places, the NIV, the translations that it's made. And uh, the reason I did that is because the NIV is essentially the granddaddy of all of these new versions as far as usage is concerned. It's more widely distributed and used than uh, any other translation outside of the Bible. Amen. You know, the way I said that. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> the NIV is, is the official uh, Bible of, uh, I guess, I don't know if they officially declare it to be, a Southern Baptist church, but a lot of people in there use it, but a lot of fundamental Baptists use it too, and a lot of other people use it. I thought you might be interested in some statistics. Now, I'm not one that's, uh, you know, statistics will burn you up and wear you out, but uh, as you, I don't know if you realize it or not, but the NIV has changed considerably since its first incarnation and to the point to where it is today, which have obviously, of course, means that if it has changed up to this point, it will continue to change. And uh, here is a, um, here is some of the statistics that uh, we start with. As, as far as NIV of uh, 1984 up into the present, only 60% of the original NIV has been retained. A full 40% has been changed. Uh, so people say, Brother Hovind, why do you use the King James? Man, it's old English. Nobody can understand it. It's hard to read. I understand all that. And as a brand new Christian, saved out of the Methodist church, uh, I, my mom gave me every kind of new Bible version there was. Well, if a new one came out, hey, son, you're going to love this one. So I've got a huge collection of all the Bible versions. When I was 16, I had the reviled substandard perversion of the Bible. It's here someplace, my original copy. But uh, I was reading that, going to church, going to this little independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist church. 
and the preacher was banging on the pulpit saying the Bible's the Word of God, and I was making notes in my revised standard version. And after a couple of months, he said, Brother Hovind, you've been a Christian a few months now. Uh, it's time you get a Bible. I said, I got a Bible. He said, no, you need a real Bible. I was offended. Okay, I thought, well, I got a Bible. I've been making notes. I've been reading an hour a day. What do you mean? He said, well, there's real problems with that one. So why King James? It's been 33 or 37 years now as a Christian of you know, studying this topic. Why? Look at Psalms chapter 12. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. What does the word them refer back to in that verse? Thou shalt preserve them. Preserve what? His words. He's promising he's going to preserve his words, right? How about NIV? The words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a furnace of clay, purified seven times. O Lord, you will keep us safe and protect us from such people forever. Is that saying the same thing? I mean, I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. It looks to me like somebody's wrong about this one. Okay. What does this mean? Keep us from such people. What people is it talking about? There are very serious differences between these Bible versions. We've got a book. I don't know if I have it here. It's in our library. It, the guy sent it to me. It took me six months to figure out what the title said. I read it. I said, what? Well, I went out of something else. Every time I look at the book, I said, what is this? The title was, Things That Are Different Are Not The Same. I thought, well, duh. Why would you title a book like that? You know, Things That Are Different Are Not The Same. And then I thought, wow, these Bible versions are definitely different. So you can't say they're the same. There are, as far as I understand it, 151 English translations of the Bible right now available. The law is you cannot get a copyright and therefore protect your work and therefore get more money unless you have 10% different from the original. Are there 151 different ways to say each of the verses in the Bible? At some point, you're going to have to stop saying it the right way and say it the wrong way just to make it different, just to get your copyright, just to get your money. Love of money, root of all evil. Here's a quick story. We could take an hour on this one, but yeah, right after the time of Christ, I believe the devil wants to take over the church. I believe the devil wants to take over this church. One person at a time. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. Close your window. Go back inside your house. Go back inside right now. I am inside. We have a real chance at this new world order. An order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. After 1989, when I first heard this flat earth subject, I dismissed it without even giving it a second thought. But more recently, at the beginning of 2015, I ran across a few Flat Earth videos again. And while looking into the fake moon photos circulating around, I saw that people were claiming that the images from Earth from space were fake as well. Pretty soon, the Flat Earth subject became viral online. And after looking at the Apollo missions one night and coming to the conclusion that they were nothing more than a huge con game, it jarred my memory about something. And for a very specific reason, I decided to look deeply into the Flat Earth without just dismissing it blindly as so many do. Why did I look into it this time? Well, I do pray for knowledge and wisdom and discernment, but maybe the recent Apollo footage I watched helped. However, I live near a very large lake, Lake Ontario, and I happen to remember going to the beach as a kid and looking across the lake and seeing New York State coast off in the distance. I never ever thought anything about it ever, except I remember it being there when I went to the beach. Now, I've been to that beach a hundred times over the years, and once this topic gained more prominence in early 2015, the first video I saw explained the curvature of the Earth and what it's supposed to be in inches per mile. 
And it resonated with me because I remember that I could see clear across the lake to the other coast, something that broke all the sphere Earth rules. So with NASA fakery on my mind and the memory of seeing this coastline that supposedly was too far below the horizon for me to be able to see it due to the curvature of the Earth, I re-examined the flat Earth theory. And as unbelievable as it seemed, it started to make a lot of sense, especially since I did distinctly remember being able to see that far coast basically any time I was at my local beach. And as I've said, I've been there hundreds of times over the years. But even so, I went back to the beach recently and stood at the shore. I looked south and guess what? I could see the New York State coastline just like I remember. Now I googled the distance and it was approximately 36 miles. I learned what the curvature of the Earth is supposed to be exactly at that distance. And according to the people that believe in the sphere, and I found out that the coast should have been buried below my ability to see it by almost 900 feet. That part of the New York State coast had a top elevation of less than 300 feet. So that left at least a huge 600 foot discrepancy. And even more because I could see some of the height of the far shore. Was something really wrong with the reality that they've been selling us ever since we were born? Well, I ended up becoming a little fixated on proving or disproving the concept. And at first, I truly thought disproving the flat Earth would be rather easy. I thought there had to be a reasonable explanation why I could see so far beyond the so-called curve barrier. I learned about light refraction and superior mirages. I learned about perspective and horizons. I learned about how our eyes work. I viewed dozens of similar experiences on YouTube. I listened to experts and people who thought they had logical but spherical explanations. In fact, I tried for a few months to debunk the concept and just couldn't. The more I looked into it, the more sense it made and the less likely that the sphere model we've been spoon-fed since birth was a reality. It's just flat out wrong. And as more people shared their experiences and proofs online, it only added to my growing, pretty much unwavering belief that the world is not what we've been told. And learning about how our eyes work and how perspective work helps a lot with understanding sunrises and sunsets and ships disappearing hull first at sea and other supposed sphere earth proofs. I can't say for certain what shape the earth is or how big it is, or if there's an Antarctic ring or a barrier beyond it, or if it's an infinite plane. Maybe everything we theorize is not complete. There are so many possibilities that it blows the mind. And the flat earth has no real complete standard model because it's all based on us finding out things for ourselves. We agree on the facts and certain basics, but the rest is only hypothetical even if it seemingly makes sense. And as the evidence mounts for both the flat earth and against the sphere, I wanted to create a special place where folks can learn and share what they've learned with other supporters. Differences of opinion are certainly going to come forth and should be expressed openly. But remember that the goal of my videos and their corresponding threads is to provide the opportunity to use each of us to learn and grow in any area that any of us has a problem in. If there is a thing you can't understand, then ask. Someone will have an opinion and we can go from there. If you have a point to make against what is considered an accepted flat earth fact, please provide any relevant links or supporting proofs or videos. I am currently under the impression that the entire space program, even the low Earth orbit and all that is there, is really just a sleight of hand trick by a group of illusionists that have swindled the public, the governments of the world, the media, and us into believing a lie. Everybody, a small group of corporations and cabals have almost complete control over the entire financial, educational, high-level governmental and media systems, leaving it up to real armchair scientists and normal people that can critically think and recreate experiments themselves to independently prove or just prove any accepted line of thought about our reality. Look, I ain't the smartest man on the flat earth, but I ain't no dummy. I'm educated and I never ever questioned or ever thought of an alternative to a sphere earth until this year. It never entered my mind to question this part of our reality at all, ever. But now I question everything. I'm a Christian and I think I see the big picture. Thanks, Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to see more proof against the heliocentric model and proof against the sphere, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything you disagree with, Make sure you leave a note below explaining exactly why. Remember folks, follow the golden rule. God loves you. We'll talk soon. At first they dedicated broadcast channels to calling the dome builders out, demanding answers, and ran them day and night. At the end of each cycle, the words kept repeating, we know. But arrogance ebbs at patience, and their demands were met with silence, which was taken as blatant dismissal. This fueled their ambition even more. The people withdrew all their efforts from breaching the outer barrier and formed a new plan. If the creators were not going to submit, then they would build a bridge and meet them at the gates. So a building was designed, 
but to call it a building was to call the pyramids a sand castle. It was the greatest structure ever conceived, at least to them. It was to be over thirty miles wide and hundreds of miles high, enough to reach the dome ceiling itself, where they would meet the builders face to face. They abandoned nature completely and pushed aside ecologic systems to accomplish their goal. They cannibalized entire mountain ranges, which they used to admire and love to acquire the raw material for the awesome structure. The work crews built with flawless precision and it was obvious that it was going to succeed. A bridge to the edge of the sky itself. The work would only pause long enough for the mighty armies below to look up and yell, We come for you! So loudly that on a clear day you could actually feel the dome shake. And the creators, faced with their first great challenge, decided to start again. And the people were changed their language fragmented so that the builders couldn't continue. The tower was dismantled, their technology removed and forgotten, and the people scattered. A new group was introduced to the dome, divided in every way imaginable, so that unity was next to impossible, and everything slowed down. Languages evolved and devolved into other dialects, and the languages produced text which produced different forms of culture and some amazing things began to happen, the most important of which was the arts. The dome builders saw the artistic pool develop into several distinct forms. Everything drawn in any medium on a flat surface. Everything molded that took on a three-dimensional shape. Everything that produced music. All things that make up the human form and motion. And all the written works. Pictures, sculptures, music, dance, literature, the arts. Driven by passion, it is the very essence of what is good in humanity. Once this was recognized, all dome methods put in place were to cultivate and enhance this process. Land masses were adjusted with geology and temperature to support every kind of terrain with mountains, rivers, oceans, plains, forests, jungles, deserts, all of it stunning, all of it stimulating the human mind, nourishing it. And the modifications continued, with seemingly endless shades of weather. The sky was overhauled, a moon added, and layers upon layers upon layers of stars, so that one day, when the people were able to see further than their own eyes, there would still be something new to see. And the arts flourished but there was a cost. The languages and division of cultures had put the population at odds and wars were raging at regular intervals. The dome builders debated if the price was too high. Plans were drawn up to make more changes until they noticed that the arts thrived even through the worst of conflicts, producing grace and beauty despite their burning world. It was wonderful and terrible at the same time, and the debate outside the barrier continued to intensify until a majority spoke out and said, This world is a creative force, and we must see what it leads to. The barrier must be hidden at all costs. So the globe model was put into the population, and both science and religion adapted to it. The arts grabbed onto it like a new drug the creative minds of the world exploding with new concepts. Their universe was now infinite, and the rules changed. Science then led to science fiction, which opened up everything else. Books, pictures, sculptures, dance and music, all reaching deep into space. Decade after decade of wonderful possibilities, rising above the ashes that were at their feet. And it's not just the artists, it's everyone. You affect others, who affect others, who inspire others, who build it, paint it, sculpt it, sing it, who then put it up on a pedestal and hold it under the light and say, this is a piece of who we are. 
And for every one of them, there are hundreds of others who, for whatever reason, were unable to express the songs and images and stories that are in their heads. Imagination is far more important than knowledge because it is limitless. It is your shield, your sword against the cruelty of destructive forces. There are those right now who live in chaos, whose life is surrounded by a swirling nightmare from which they think they'll never escape. These are the true warriors of the world, and they are far braver than me. I am humbled by those who suffer the most. Know that mountains were built for you. Oceans were built for you. All of this was built for you, your struggles and your trials by fire. It may be today, it may be tomorrow, but one day the curtain will close and this stage will be struck. And when the dust settles, no matter where you are right now, you'll see the big picture and have new eyes and you will be shown what wonder really is. And as you leave this most magnificent of theaters, heading towards the next, my hope is that you'll pause, look back at the stage and say, I was actually in it, you know, right there in the thick of things. And it was a sight to see, because it really is a hell of a ride. Imagine what the next one will be like. And this topic of copyright is very interesting if uh, you think about uh, that you, uh, to produce any videos about with the, the moon landing where the original uh, footage is is prohibited because they have the copyright. So, so you can't... It's the tema de... De derechos de autores, mira, <laughs> no puedes hacer un, un documental de ese tema de la luna porque ellos tienen el, los derechos de autor, ese video original. Ah, mira, ah, se perdieron las fotos, he oído algo. Ah, mira, qué, qué interesante que esto se pierde tan fácilmente. So they lost this, this uh, some, some original stuff. They, uh, anyway, they have the uh, copyright uh, rights about that stuff. So first, you you you're prohibited to talk about or to to treat this because it's copyright. And second, are we are we lost it? Oh, it happened that we lost it. Oh. Español, English, Deutsch. Normalmente produzco solo videos en inglés y español. Normally, I produce only videos in English and Spanish. Normalerweise produziere ich nur videos in English and Spanish. Pero hoy voy a hacer otra excepción y traducirlo también en alemán. But today I make another exception and translate it into German too. Aber heute werde ich noch mal eine Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. Ja, algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video hashtag BTC4. Now, already some weeks ago, I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I'm sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten äh, finanziell helfen kann. 
y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin. And give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und Motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im Moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma, explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich en folgendem. folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimum 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, And the next time uh, you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante. O maybe a tip in a restaurant. O la trinkelt en un restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin. De direcciones de Bitcoin. When you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, 
copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die, äh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüssel ähm, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015, escribir la fecha, más plus cuatro años, eh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin eh, en estos cuatro años, yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in this um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. In mi video antigen